In this video I'm going to show you how to disassemble a GY6 brake cylinder. It has the reservoir mounted right on it like you see here. Now the reason why I'm pulling mine apart, I was experiencing a problem when I go to squeeze the brake lever. The brake lever would start to get jammed or hung up and I have to angle the lever around to get it to work again. So I'm going to pull out the entire piston and show you what the inside looks like. So the first thing you're going to want to do is just take apart your top assembly like you see right here. There's screws all around the edges. There's a couple of screws underneath the plastic here. You'll have one over here. And there's also a screw underneath the front. You can see that hole right there. That holds the front on. You want to disassemble this whole piece, lift this away. Once that's removed, and the first thing I did was take off the two screws that hold the brake fluid reservoir cover on. Lift it up carefully. Lift that out. That's the back side of it. Make sure there was no debris when you remove the cover, that the brake fluid is nice and clean. Now you have an option. You can replace the entire unit, which is not too much money, or you could replace just the seals and the piston that slides inside the, the brake cylinder, like I'm going to do. If you want to remove the entire assembly, you're going to have to remove that bolt, a bolt that's hollow, and there's a couple of washers so the fluid can go through into the hose, so you're going to want to remove that. And there's also two bolts, there's one on the top and one on the bottom in the same place, and that will take it off of the handlebar, and then you can pull out the entire assembly. Now also connected to the underside of the brake cylinder is a micro switch, which is right there. It's hard to see, it's black, I'm pointing to it. And that's the clicking you hear. Sometimes they could become faulty and your brake lights may not work properly. So you could put a, you could actually just take the two blades off of the micro switch, hook up a digital multimeter on a continuity setting. And once you do that, you could squeeze the lever make sure you hear the alarm and then it goes off make sure you hear the continuity alarm and then it goes off if you don't have a continuity alarm you could just set your meter to a very low ohms range and make sure it goes almost to zero and then to infinity when you release almost to zero and infinity when you release if it doesn't this switch is faulty or the way the lever makes contact with the switch is not proper you have to check that out now the first thing you're going to do is remove this nut on the bottom of this bolt holding the lever into the brake cylinder and then you can pull the lever out. Lift that bolt up. And that comes out like that. Now you're looking at the end of the cylinder where the piston is that goes in and out. I don't want to push that right now because it might shoot some residual brake fluid out. What you're going to do, way inside, it's going to be hard to see, but way in the back, around this piston, is going to be a retaining ring. And what you're going to have to do is take a pair of retaining ring pliers like this. Make sure when you squeeze them, it pulls the ring smaller, like you see here, because this is an external ring. It's expanding against the outside walls of the larger diameter hole that you see here. So when I reach in like this, I'll grab on, squeeze, and the ring will come out, and then the piston will slide out too. So let me do that. There's the retaining ring. Let me grab it with a needle nose. All right. Now, when I pull the piston gently towards me, there's going to be some fluid left in there. So I'm going to want to put a little container under here to catch it as I slide the piston out. I'm going to slide the piston out. Once the piston is out, I will show you closer up exactly what it looks like. All right, once you slide it out of the brake cylinder, this is exactly what it looks like. This is the end that had the rubber boot. Mine was dried out and cracked. That's where the lever pushed against right here. Then you have two cup-shaped 
rubber gaskets. There's one here, and there's one on the outside edge, both pointing in the same direction. This is the spring, so when you push the lever in, it pushes it back out. Now, if you have these cup-shaped gaskets, you could just take these gaskets off and swap them out. What I'm going to do now is try this one out. Now, this is from the exact same reservoir, but a different manufacturer. I had it laying around. The gaskets are in great shape. There's the other one. Now, the two of these are pretty much identical in length and the positioning of the gaskets. This one here is about four years old, and it still looks pretty good, so I don't know why it's hanging up, but it is hanging up. So I'm just going to try this one out and see if it makes a difference. I'm going to take the same gasket here, which is that one, install it there, put a thin film of silicone grease over it, a thin film on this side too, and I'm going to take some brake fluid with the Q-tip and go into the opening on the cylinder to make sure there's no gook and grime. All right, so right in here, we're going to reach in along the bottom, and as you can see, it's not nice. And so I'm going to clean it out thoroughly, and then when it's all clean, clean brake fluid on this end, and just coat the walls and slide the new one in, and reinstall the retaining ring and fill it back up. All right, this one's all ready to go. It's lubricated. Make sure your cups are facing the right direction. From the rubber boot on the outside, you want the cups facing in. So as this is pressed in, the pressure will force the cup open, making a better seal. And that's about it. I already lubricated the cylinder with brake fluid. I'm going to slide this back in and put the retaining ring back on. Now to put this on, just slide this rubber boot off of the end. It'll still stay attached, but it'll retract. And then you can get your retaining ring pliers and reinstall this inside the cylinder. Once it's installed, the rubber boot can be pushed back in and we can begin reassembly. Now before you push this rubber boot back into the recessed area in here, you're going to want to leave the rubber boot pulled off the end and you want to push on the center of the piston and ensure that the retaining ring is engaged into the groove. So you're going to take a small screwdriver and gently push on the retaining ring all the way around and make sure you hear it click. Once it's in, like that, you're good to go. So now what I'm going to do is put the handle assembly back on with the nut and put some fluid back in and show you how to bleed the system. Now to bleed the brakes is very simple. Just make sure the reservoir is about three quarters of the way full. Fill it to about a quarter of an inch from the top with the reservoir level. So adjust your handlebars to make sure that's level. Lay the cover on top of it, but don't screw it down. And that's so when you squeeze the lever slowly all the way in and out, you don't have any fluid trying to squirt out and make a mess. Now down by the wheel, what you're going to do, now right over here is where the bleed screw is. You're going to get a clear tube. Ideally, you would use a piece of a vinyl tube. I only had a braided one, so it's a little harder to see. You put your vinyl tube over the end and feed that down into a jar. Make sure the jar is about a quarter of the way filled with brake fluid and make sure the line is all the way to the bottom. Now to start, we're going to loosen the bleed screw right here. We'll just loosen that a little bit, maybe a quarter of a turn to a half. Once that's loose, then we can begin squeezing the lever in, out, in, out. As that's happening, you're going to be forcing any air out of this tube and out of the brake system into this bottle. Now the bottle has about a quarter to a third of the way it's filled with brake fluid and the reason for that is you don't want air siphoning back into the system. So you want to make sure when the air pushes out that you draw liquid back in. Now you keep doing it until there's no longer any air from the brake lines going into the bottle. At that point you would go back to the screw and tighten it all the way and you're complete. And then after you do that, you would top off the reservoir to about a quarter of an inch from the top and then secure the cover. And that's as simple as it gets. Now once you have completed the brake bleeding procedure and the bleed screw has been tightened back down, you're going to want to squeeze the lever a few times to make sure it's not squishy 
when you squeeze the lever, it should become very firm. If it's still squishy, that would indicate that there is air in your brake line or inside the piston assembly here, which is being compressed rather than pressurizing the brake fluid. So you're going to have to repeat the brake bleeding procedure one more time. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlists as well.